Rob Parker, uh, not only is the instigator of this network, he is the most frugal human being alive. And he is joining us now live from his his condo, which he probably paid thirty dollars for. So where did where did you get that jacket, and how much did it cost you? Unbelievable deal. This was at Macy's. Tommy Hill figure, two hundred and ninety five original. Colin, I got it for twenty three ninety nine. Yes, indeed. Salmon. It's not pink. It's salmon. Beautiful heard. color. Oh, it's, it's, it's also one of my favorite fish. Okay, let's go to this. I don't buy the Lakers because I think even with LeBron, they're dead last in every offensive category, and that's with LeBron, who's a great setup guy. Um, I, I, I just don't buy him. We live in Los Angeles. I don't buy him. They can't stop the three, and they can't shoot it. What do you, what do you make of Kyle Kuzma and the Lakers? LeBron pinned his hopes on him the other day. Yeah, I thought that was a mistake. It, it's typical LeBron. He's already threw, thrown out a couple of things that could go as excuses for his minions when they don't win, Colin. <laughs> but but to, for me to say to Kyle Kuzma, he's the reason we're going to win a championship or not, is putting a lot of pressure on an inconsistent. He's a good player sometimes, but sometimes he's a bad player. And I just think to do that publicly, there's no reason to. If you want to go to Kyle Kuzma's locker and talk to him personally and be like, dude, we need this from you. This is what will help us win. I'm good with that. But to put that out there that he's the reason why, when it still comes down to Anthony Davis more than anything, but to put that out there, I thought it was a mistake by LeBron. So you think he's making excuses? He's setting up the situation so that, when they don't win, and I'm with you, they will not win. The Clippers are going to win the championship. But when they don't win, he'll be people will be like, oh, yeah, well, who does he have? Other than AD, he doesn't have anybody. Kyle Kuzma was terrible. Uh, you know, J.R. Smith was bad. I mean, there'll be all these other excuses to, to say why LeBron didn't win a championship. Damian Lillard, maybe it's because I worked in Portland, but I watch a lot of Blazer games. I, I think he compares favorably to Iverson in terms of offensive output, and I think Damian has five more peak years left. I mean, I don't think we're close to the end for him. Um, you're, 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 what do you make of Portland and Dame? Some think, I'm one of them, they'll beat L.A. in the opener, first round. I, I'm not convinced of that. I mean, he's a hell of a player, and he's been tremendous we know what he can do but the the trailblazers kind of remind me of the old box of cracker jacks except for when you finish eating it there's no prize at the end colin <laughs> i mean last year they got to the western conference finals and got swept with dame lillard right do you remember that yeah they weren't ready for prime time so i'm not convinced that you know everybody's putting it out there it tells you that people don't have any confidence in the Lakers more than they believe in Portland. If, if Portland were to beat the Lakers in the first round, that would be a major blow to LeBron James, Anthony Davis, the Lakers organization. I, I don't see Portland beating them. It would be a major upset, and all the headlines would be on LeBron and the Lakers, not on Damian Lillard and Portland. What do you make of college football shutting down? You're a Big Ten guy. I'm a Pac-12 guy. I love both conferences. They shut it down. Uh, I've always thought college athletics is a bit of a house of cards. Only football makes any money in a handful of college basketball programs. What do you make of it this morning? What are your emotions? You know what? They did the right thing, Colin. If, if you can't guarantee that these kids are going to be safe, and, and people who keep sprouting out all these uh, figures of what players didn't test positive and all the tests that they've taken. If that's the case, then why in the world are kids sign have to sign waivers to play? It tells you that they can't guarantee their health and, and, and the, their well-being. That's why. And they don't want to be held liable. And shame on Nick Saban and, and Jim Harbaugh and all these other coaches who are defying the college presidents and, and the uh, ADs and, and talking about, you know, uh, that the kids want to play and they will want to play and all, all this stuff. Colin, are those guys going to take their salaries from this year, put it in a trust fund for these kids who they want to go out and play football, and if something happens, they can go to that. Those guys, Saban, Harbaugh, all these top coaches, will not be left holding the bag if these schools play and, and God forbid something bad happens long term. You know who will be liable? The schools will be liable. So it's easy for coaches to stick their chests out and tell everybody that 
We understand that. Kids want to play football, and they want to coach football. And, Colin, we want to watch football, right? It would be good for Fox and ESPN and all the other networks. We all get it. But if you can't guarantee their health, which nobody can, I don't see how in the world you can go forward. The NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, hockey, those are professionals. They're getting paid. Yeah, I, I I think they did the right thing in college. By the way, base, but you're a Hall of Fame baseball uh, writer, and you are uh, yeah. Your your history is writing, and then you got into radio and buying very inexpensive, beautiful suits. <laughs> so they're considering a playoff bubble. What do you make of that? I think it's easier when you have less teams. I think the idea of trying to do a bubble with thirty teams and what they were trying to do. And remember, Colin, the first idea. Do you remember the three states they were talking about yeah. putting the bubbles in? It was Arizona, Florida, and Texas, all that had spikes after they reopened too soon. So that I don't know. I'm not so sure that that would have been the best idea. But anyway, I think if it's a smaller number of teams and you could kind of manage it and, and you're not playing with fans, so it doesn't matter where you play at. That could work, and it's good for baseball to revisit that. I would, I would be all in favor of it. Yeah, 13,000 tests, point one have been positive. So baseball's getting a bad rap because the Marlins are goofy, but overall they've done a really good – they've actually – They have done a good job. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. It's only the Marlins and the Cardinals. That's it. Look at all the games that are playing. I, people are like, oh, baseball, they messed – they, they, they uh, dropped the ball. No, they didn't. If the players follow the protocol and do what they're supposed to – there's going to be a chance of a spike column once or twice, but so far it's been working. I've been watching baseball every night. Yeah. Finally, my NFL predictions came out yesterday. They were genius, I thought. Uh, you didn't like one in particular. It was Brady, Atlanta or something? Yes. I can't believe you. Ha Atlanta is going to take that spot from the Tampa Bay Bucks. The Bucks are going to have year 13, a Baker's uh, dozen of not making the playoffs, old uh, Tom Brady, old Gronk, old Shady McCoy. I mean, it's like putting the band back together. I'm not buying into it. I remember you were high on the Browns a year ago. You thought that they would make the playoffs at the end. You remember I argued with you, and I told you that they wouldn't make the playoffs on your show, and I'm going to do it again. The Bucks with Tom Brady will not, N-O-T, make the playoffs. All right. So where'd you buy that suit, by the way? I may go to that store and buy myself something nice. Where was that over there? You should. This was at Macy's. Also, check out Nordstrom Rack. They got oh. some great jackets, great prices. Colin. Do you shop every day? I don't work for the stores. I, you know what? Three or four times a day, a week, I'm in the stores taking a look around. You got to be patient. You got to look through the rack. And here's the biggest thing. Don't buy anything if it isn't your size and you really don't like it. He shops three or four times a week. I don't think I shop three or four times a decade. That's incredible. You got a life. You got a wife and kids. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess when I was single, I shop more. That's a good point there, Rob. Uh, you look fantastic as always. Rob Parker. Thanks, man. Thanks, bud. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.